Hello friends. So today I thought I would bring you a slightly more personal video and show you what is inside my sewing box. So this is my box. This one came from an antiques dealer in the UK. I love old sewing boxes. I have a collection of them, which I will be walking you through in another video here coming up pretty soon. But today I thought I would focus just on my personal sewing box. Collecting boxes, looking at boxes, when this shape, they call it a sarcophagus shape, comes up, I always get really excited just because it is different. It's from a pretty specific time in history, around about the 1820s. You can find them up to as late as the 1830s down into the 18 teens, but for the most part, they're gonna be from about 1820 to 1829. Uh, they're more, I don't know, frivolous looking, like look at all of these swirls and look at the crazy swoopy flowers on this. They're just more whimsical and I, I think they're amazing. Now the dilemma I had when I was looking for a box for myself was that I wanted one that was empty. I do have some that are like this and of different styles that have some or even all of the pieces inside, in which case I would never use it because I don't want to take apart the set. You know, I don't want to have them stuck in a bag somewhere and just use the box. So when they come with things, they're either, you know, beautifully stocked or they have an obviously, um, I don't know, that, that person is still very present in the box. Like there's one I have that has a note that's written inside the, the lid. And, and so that lady, um, and I have, uh, I don't know, I'm getting, getting lost on a tangent here because all this stuff will be in the sewing box collection video. But you know, this one box has a note. Um, other ones are completely kitted out and I just, I can't see ripping all that stuff out to make it my own, right? So those are all tucked away in my collection anyway a sewing box is such a central hub of life like things break or tear and you go to your sewing box you want to create something beautiful like an embroidery or um, lace making you go to your sewing box like there's a lot of time spent in a sewing box and each one is very very personal to its owner because what one person finds as a daily necessity another person just doesn't even use it all. So over the years, especially if you've had one that you've worked on over the years or lived out of over the years, it's gonna collect a lot of things that are very personal to you. So sewing boxes especially are intensely fascinating to me. So anyway, here is a look into mine. Oh yeah, so <clears throat> the whole point of that tangent, I guess, is that I had to find one that was in good shape that spoke to me that was cool that made me smile looking at it was very inviting because who wants to work out of something that they go eh, whatever if if it pulls you into wanting to be with it and look inside of it then you'll use it more and so yeah I had to find one that made me smile seeing it and made me happy to open the lid and embark on whatever project I needed to do yet find one that was empty inside but not trashed inside if that makes sense so i wanted to have uh to not have a tray to not have um you know the original fabric lining so that i didn't feel bad about tearing it out in order to make what i wanted it to be to suit my purposes i needed to find one that fit some of my things that i didn't want to brush over and I'll get to those when I show you the inside of it. I'll, I'll talk about the things inside that needed kind of a custom arrangement. And so I found this one that was pretty much empty on the inside. It had a little bit of the metallic paper, but other than that, it had already been pulled and torn off. It was just kind of empty inside. So let's open it up and I'll walk you through the inside. I love it. <laughs> I've had it for a really long time and I still love opening it. It's, it's, anyway. The first thing that you might see is that the tray is not wood. It's paper or cardboard covered in paper. My problem is that I had very specific things that I needed to fit into the tray. And my husband's a finished carpenter, a general contractor. And when I get this figured out exactly how I want it, which I think it is, 
Um, he's going to make me one out of wood. However, I don't really need one out of wood. The paper one, the cardboard paper is working just fine. And I like the color. And so we're just going to kind of leave it like this until it starts to fall apart. I don't know, until I decide that I just really need it to be made out of wood. So there are some things that I needed this tray to be specifically deep for. And one is my egg cup pin cushion, which meant that this tray needed to be about two inches deep, which you're not going to find in the trays that came with the original sewing boxes. I've never seen one that was two inches deep. The other things I needed was a large chamber for this cup. So this cup I use for scraps. The cup is sentimentally important to me because this was my grandmother's. This is her china pattern whenever we would go to holidays at her house. That was the china pattern that we would use. And this is a very chipped, I don't know if you can see the chips on here, but it's very chipped. You wouldn't drink out of it. So I use it in my sewing box. And whenever I open the lid, I get to see a remembrance of my grandmother. Um, and so I keep just scraps there holding them down I have this tin which I've had since I was a little kid. I love Cicely Mary Barker's uh, flower fairies. Zinnias are one of my favorites. I also have, I don't know, I have a whole collection of these little tins but this one is one of my favorites and inside I have safety pins and miniature clothespins, snaps, all that kind of stuff. So that's what lives in the center. So it had to have a big compartment in the middle that was deep enough to hold the teacup and then a smaller one that was deep enough to hold that pincushion. So then moving over around, I have my spools of thread. So I really like these mother of pearl, I don't know, spool embellishers. They're not a complete set. I have these two match, these two match, but they're different sizes. This one is kind of a link between the two of them. And this one is actually just an old button that I've had for a long time that I really like that's kind of shoved in the top. Anyway, they just sleeve through the center of the spool. This is an old spool, but not old thread. So I take the old spools and then I just put modern thread on them and kind of the best of both worlds. Now, underneath this are my needle books. So this is one that I made and it just has, you know, needles in it. This one is an old one and I love it. It's so beautiful. And look at that. It's, it's an oil painting in miniature on this amazing little spool um, needle book. And then inside, it still has the ribbon, but it doesn't have the pages, but that's fine. But isn't that gorgeous? It's painted on wood. This is really, really thin wood. And I just think it's the most beautiful thing. Anyway, so I keep that in there underneath underneath the one that I actually do keep needles in. And that lives under the thread. Then here in the front, I have my scissors. I have a measuring tape and my leather thimble. I do like leather thimbles better than metal ones. I like having that little bit of feedback you can get through them. These are my two, again, um, antique spool holders, but these are DMC Pearl 12 threads, and they're kind of my most recent favorite tatting thread. I, um, I like tatting with Rayon Embroidery Floss. I like tatting with the DMC 80, although the DMC 80 apparently is discontinued and can't get it anymore, which is a bummer. And uh, so this is kind of like a cross between the two, and, you know, I like it. Uh, so that's where that stuff lives, just because these are the things that I grab most often, and that way they're in front. Uh, underneath this little section is odds and ends. If you've had a sewing box for any amount of time, you know that it collects stuff. So I have another pair of scissors. I have some tweezers, Alice in Wonderland pin that came from somewhere. I have some other thimbles. These are like decoy thimbles for my kids when they're playing in the sewing box against my more um, antique thimbles. I have bobbins for one of my sewing machines. Um, a doll shoe. I don't know. I, for some reason, I have a doll shoe in there. I also have campfire beads. I don't know if anybody is familiar with the campfire girls. I have some campfire beads that have lived in my sewing box 
since I was probably a teenager. Um, just little things like that. I have a little stone turtle shell that came from a friend of ours. Um, some buttons, some little rhinestones. Yeah, just, just a lot of, oh look, there's even a little castle because you need a castle in your sewing box, right? So yeah, just, it's kind of the catch-all for all the little things that end up finding their way into your sewing box. And if you're, if you've been using a sewing box for a long time, especially if you're a mom, you'll find that there's just the things end up there. So anyway, so that's my little um, things that end up in the sewing box spot. All right, so then we get back into kind of pretty old stuff. So up here, this is just a flower that I've had around for a while. A lot of these things, I don't know where they came from, but they've been in my sewing box. And so, um, yeah, so they're just there and it wouldn't be my sewing box without them somehow. Uh, so this is an antique thread waxer. And what's cool is that it actually matches the, these guys here. I didn't buy them at the same time, but when you're on the lookout and you get to kind of know your pattern, you'll see it and you kind of grab stuff when you see it. There's the thread waxer. There's an emery cushion, both mother of pearl, just so beautiful. Uh, so these are some little antique tools. They're hooks and awls. Um, so you can see this is uh, got a little hook on the end. You'll prob you've probably seen all these in my videos because I use them quite a bit. There's a hook and an awl and then more hooks and awls here. So then this lifts up and <laughs> So then this lifts up and you see um, just some tatting shuttles. I actually have the tatting shuttles that I use the most in a different spot because that lives in my purse and I carry it around with me a lot more. But there's just some of the extra ones. This is one of my more recent additions. This is from uh, teaching my daughter how to tat. It's her first successfully closed ring. So that is a memory that will live inside my sewing box forever now. When you get looking into sewing boxes in these kind of personal places or, or like it's almost like a little fort, you know, you, you start seeing all of this kind of cool life stuff that wouldn't be in anybody else's sewing box. So anyway, so that's not the only compartment in there. So I've got tatting shuttles there. And then if you lift up the front, then this is where I have, oops, this is where I have long skinny things I guess. Uh, so I've got some more awls, I've got a seam ripper, I have a um, hem gauge, I have some very blunt needles that I use for um, sewing ribbons and or threading ribbons and elastics. I've got you know old crochet hooks. That's pretty much what's in there is just kind of long skinny things. So that's all for the top. So then we can look inside. All right, so in here I have bigger stuff and stuff that I don't use quite as often. So I have pinking shears. I have um, more thread that I use for tatting and things. This is bigger though. I tend to use it for um, like my kids when, my daughter when she's tatting. I have a spare um, pearl thread. I have extra pins because I really like these glass headed pins. Um, I have some spools of Guterman thread. Uh, this is where I keep my needles. So I have some in my pincushion that I work from. I have some from my needle book that I draw from and then I fill my needle book with these here. Another measuring gauge and then just like more crochet hooks. Lots and lots of crochet hooks. Um, a pen. This is a this is a one micron pen. I like these. They're archival. It's kind of a shadowy brown color, so I use this for marking fabrics a lot. It makes a very small, very precise marking that is permanent. I think it works great. And then I have a lighter for um, burn tests and melting the edge of ribbons. So. That is the bottom of my sewing box. That's what I keep in my sewing box. Thank you for joining me on my little tour of my sewing box. And now I'd love to hear what you keep in your sewing box. What, what kind of funny little odds and ends do you have that are probably very specific to you or nostalgic or something that's in your sewing box? You could also take a picture of it and link me on Instagram. I'll be watching there too, but, um, 
yeah, I, I love sewing boxes and nostalgic story. I mean, that's why I'm a historian, I guess. It's, I love the human experience. I love, I love sharing people's nostalgia and sentimentality. And I just think that that adds so much richness to life. So yeah, I'll be looking out for your comments below. And thank you for joining me. I'll see you next time. Bye.